What's going on, everybody? Crispy Flakes here, and today we are repicking the 2012 NBA Draft. Uh, now, this draft had some very good players come out of it, a few franchise players, um, and some top-notch role players. So, as you guys can see right here, we have the uh, top players from this draft, of course. Well, I mean, all the players from this draft, I should say. And uh, we're going to do the top 10 draft picks. I got them all in the correct order, and we're going to see how this draft should have went. So, let's go ahead and start the 2012 Says six, always says 16. It's the 2012. I will not lie to you. The 2012 NBA draft. And uh, okay, we got some trade offers. Not going to be uh, dealing anything with that at all. But the New Orleans Pelicans had the first pick in the 2012 um, NBA draft. And actually, looking at their team right here, um, you know they had a, they had Eric Gordon. I apologize, guys. The, whoever made this roster, the ages are not correct. So these players are actually probably a lot younger than they appear. Um, you know, at this point in time. But as you look on here, they don't really have all that much. I mean, Eric Gordon, yeah, he was a young player at the time. Um, he had a, He's had a lot of injury issues. Uh, of course, you got Chris Kamen, who was drafted in, uh, I believe, 2003. So, you know, a solid big guy, but in 2012, uh, you know, they were looking for more for a franchise player. Now, we all know they took Anthony Davis. And in my opinion, that does not change. With the uh, first pick in the 2012 NBA draft, I have once again the New Orleans Pelicans taking Anthony Davis. Um, this player is just insane, guys. Such a good player. Like, he is exactly how a big man should be in this day and age. Um, just his skill set out there. Like, he's the perfect big dude. So, we got Anthony Davis from Kentucky. All right. And uh, the number two pick. Um, this is the Charlotte Bobcats. I'm here through the, the Hornets, but this is actually the Charlotte Bobcats. And they took Michael Kidd Giltris. Um, solid player, you know. I mean, more of a defensive-oriented guy. But looking at this team right here... Besides Kemba Walker, who was really young at this uh, day and age, he was, you know, he's a solid player. Um, at the time, they didn't really know what he was going to be. Uh, the rest of the team, you know, their second best player is DJ White and uh, Byron Mullins. Like, where are they at these days, guys? Exactly. <laughs> so, I'm thinking the number two pick here, while they have a good young point guard in Kemba Walker, I think Kemba definitely is capable of playing the shooting guard position just with this style of play. Um, so, I actually have them taking another point guard. And I think some of you guys can probably predict this, but I think the second best player from this draft... Um, in my opinion, and really a good fit here, would be Damian Lillard at the number two draft pick. I, I just think, you know, just what he's done to that tri uh, Portland Trailblazers team, especially this year, the 2016 playoffs, they were supposed to be like a scrub team. Uh, but Damian Lillard literally put that team on his back and led them to a playoff spot alongside CJ McCollum, of course. So I guess they were both carrying together out there. Okay, number three draft pick went to the Washington Wizards. Now at this time, they took Bradley Beal. I have nothing against Bradley Beal. I mean, he has had a lot of injury issues. Um, you know, that just kind of happens with some players' careers. Now, this time they had a good young player in John Wall. But as you look at this team, you know, Nene, sure, solid player. But besides that, not really an inside presence. Um, so I actually have the number three draft pick right here going to. And i am be honest, guys, I kind of struggled this a bit. Um, but just based off, you know, what this team could use. Could you guys imagine a pick and roll, some alley-oops going up to Andre Drummond? I have the number three draft pick going here to Andre Drummond. Now, besides for his free throws, he's a very complete player, guys. I mean, you know, his free throws is, is god-awful, just the worst of all time. But he is good for a 20-20 game on any given night. And, uh, you know, I have him going number three to the Washington Wizards alongside John Wall. As a Pistons fan, it hurts me to see. But, uh, you know, it would be the right pick. And actually, at the time, they said that Andre Drummond, they, that he lacked a motor. I think he's definitely proved uh, doubters wrong with that, you know, little negative comment. Number four, fourth pick, goes to the Cleveland Cavaliers. At this time, they took Deion Waiters. Um, sure, Deion Waiters didn't really work out in Cleveland. He's a solid role player over on, uh, over on the OKC Thunder. But looking at this team right now, you know, they had Kyrie Irving at this time. Uh, this was when LeBron James actually left and went to the Miami Heat, of course. Um, Antoine Jameson was an aged player at this time, so it didn't really do too much with him. Um, and, you know, they had a player they drafted in Tristan Thompson. You know, he's good for offensive rebounds, doesn't really do too much. I think he actually plays more of a center position right now. So for the number fourth pick, um, I have this going to the second best power forward in this draft and one of the best power forwards currently in the, in the NBA, a great all-around player. Uh, the number fourth pick, I have the Cleveland Cavaliers selecting Draymond Green from Michigan State. This player, guys, has proved doubters wrong. Like, he was not supposed to be this good. I mean, when he was at Michigan State, um, he was just, you know, he, he was solid there. Good all-around player. 
Um, but now he's put him on, up like triple doubles like on the daily and stuff like that. Very good defensive player. Uh, Draymond Green going to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Number five, Sacramento Kings. They took Thomas Robinson at this draft pick here. Um, he's kind of jumped around to a lot of different teams. Hasn't really done much. Now you look at this team right here. They have a Tyreek Evans um, who was their draft pick a while back. They had DeMarcus Cousins, a very good center from Kentucky. Isaiah Thomas, who turned out to be a great point guard. Now, I look at this right here. Ty, Ty, uh, Tyreek Evans can definitely play the small forward position, but they kind of lack that shooting guard that can really knock down shots. Tyreek was not known to be a jump shooter, guys. So, at this draft pick right here, I have them taken. It, it was a toss-up, um, but due to injuries and just what this player's accomplished, um, I have the Sacramento T Kings taking wherever he's at here. Chris Middleton, man. This dude, you know, kind of off the radar a little bit. But this guy averaged 20 points per game last season. A very good shooting guard. In my opinion, the best from this draft so far. Not saying Bradley Beal cannot be that player. It just, we haven't seen it yet. And Chris Middleton has definitely proven to be that player on the Milwaukee Bucks in real life. All right, we got the number six draft pick here. Um, this was the Portland Trailblazers who took Damian Lillard with this draft pick. Um, now we get kind of down more to that role player um, stage where all the you know big name players are pretty much gone. And looking at this team right here, um, let's go to the team needs. You know they have Lamarcus Aldridge, who of course is the top power forward in this league. Um, besides that though, they have a lot of guards. I mean Wesley Matthews, Jamal Crawford, a uh, ton of point guards on this team. So I look at here, and there wasn't really a lot of good centers left in this draft. Um, so in my opinion, it was just take the next next best player available. And in my opinion, that's Bradley Beal. And like I said, he could have went over Chris Middleton. It was kind of a toss-up, but just based off things, you know, I had Chris Middleton going before him. So with this pick, I have the Portland Trailblazers taking Bradley Beal. And of course, um, in hindsight, I mean, CJ McCollum ended up being on this team, and Dame Lillard, of course. So I think I'd rather have that backcourt. I think I'd rather have CJ McCollum than Bradley Beal right now. That dude's really been beasting. All right, number seven goes to the Golden State Warriors. Um, another toss-up pick for me right here. You know, at this uh, draft pick, they ended up taking Harrison Barnes. And I was kind of considering having them take Harrison Barnes again. But then I looked at 2K ratings. Like, 2K ratings came in clutch at the last second. I was like, okay, according to 2K, this player is better. And that is Jay Crowder, guys. He's actually an 82 overall on 2K. A knockdown shooter, a guy that really can bring some defense out there. And in my, in my opinion, similar uh, style of play to Harrison Barnes. Um, so really, it could have gone either way, but I thought Jay Crowder was the pick right here to go alongside, you know, Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson. And I actually forgot to show, show the roster, my apologies, but it was Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson on that team. Not much really changed since then. Just those players are a lot more developed. All right, number eight went to the Toronto Raptors in which they took Terrence Ross. Now looking at their team here real quick, we got um, DeMar DeRozan, Ed Davis, you know, not really much of a point guard on this team, but not many point guards left. Now, one thing I do see they are lacking is a small forward. And this is where Harrison Barnes comes in, guys. I think Harrison Barnes, if you, if, to give you guys my honest opinion, I think he could be a 20-point-per-game scorer in this league. It just so happens he plays on the Golden State Warriors with a lot of great other scorers on that team. But Harrison Barnes, I think, could definitely be a second or third option on any team and be a very good player because of it. So I have Harrison Barnes going alongside DeMar DeRozan to the Toronto Raptors. I just make it make sense. Like this guy definitely has shown uh, sparks of brilliances, and you really have it. Really shows his maturity to really take a role player role on the Golden State Warriors. I think it shows a lot to his character. Um, but you know, I think he could be a lot better player if if he needed to be, which he doesn't need to be. All right, the Detroit Pistons at number nine. They took Andre Drummond. Now, of course, he's gone, so they're not going to have Andre. Um, looking at this team right here, they have Greg Monroe, a good young power forward who didn't really work out in the long term, but still has skill, no doubt. Um, Brandon Knight. You know, another good guard, combo guard, not really a franchise player, just a good role player. Ronnie Stuckey, who at this point uh, was ready to, you know, kind of leave this team. Um, ben Wallace, out of this prime. Tayshaun Prince, out of this prime at this point. So, I have the Pistons taking a defensive-oriented player. I'm um, a guy that can't really shoot all that great, but hopefully, maybe, if he switches up his ugly-ass form, that will happen eventually. I don't see it happening, though. Uh, but I actually have the Pistons taking Michael Kidd Giltris at number 9. I still think he can be a good player in this league. I still think he's a good defensive player, um, but I still, you know, he still has a ceiling that he can really reach more, uh, more of his potential if he could develop some sort of offensive-oriented game. I mean, I've seen pictures of his jump shot. I've seen footage of his jump shot. Oh my god, dude! Like, just 
don't shoot that way, don't have that shooting form, you'll be so much better, man. Um, but not trying to hate, it's just kind of facts. All right, number 10, we once again have the New Orleans Hornets, or Pelicans, as they are at this time. Um, they took Austin Rivers with, Rivers with this pick. Now, Austin Rivers has proven to be a pretty decent backup point guard, uh, more so on the Clippers than he was on the Pelicans. But um, they already have Anthony Davis, and this next pick is just, you know, they already have Eric Gordon also. Um, but you look at the rest of the team right here, they still need some more scoring out there. And I think the best possible scorer left on this team, in my opinion, is actually Deion Waiters. You know, Deion Waiters, I don't think he should have went at number four. Um, but I think he's kind of a good pickup at number 10. So I think that definitely works out. Sure, you got Terrence Ross. Um, Austin Rivers is still pretty solid. I mean, Kendall Marshall, John Henson even is a solid player. But really, it comes down to team need. And I think this team still needs to score on the perimeter. And I think Deion Waiters definitely fills that void. Although it's spelled D-I-O-N, not D-E-O-N. Whoever made this roster, it's all right. So with a number 10 pick, I have the Pelicans taking Deion Waiters. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Let me know in, uh, your guys' thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Be sure to like this video. Let me know what other drafts you want to see. And peace out, my friends.